All right, we turned in on some pretty, pretty steep structure right there and picked that fish up. Absolutely clean screen on that fish. So when you're out looking for kings, you don't necessarily have to be marking fish to hook up. This one isn't as big as the other one, but he's a fighter. Okay, he's still going into smoke. There we go. Nice little king. There we go, nice little fish. Slam that, uh, that minnow tube. Nice little cromer. Looks like a kokanee almost. We'll flay him out, put him in the smoker, and uh, be good to eat. FishHuntShoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at FishHuntShoot.com. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. Um, it's Saturday afternoon. I had a lot of rain overnight. It was raining this morning. And uh, honestly, I've been spending most of the day here running around doing chores, getting ready for the ISE show and stuff like that. But uh, as I was running my errands, running from store to store, I was thinking a lot about landlocked king fishing, and uh, I know we've been talking about it here on the channel a fair amount recently, but I know, you know, more than, more than trout, more than kokanee, guys struggle to catch landlocked kings, and especially to catch nice sized landlocked kings. So I figure any insight I could share, and having said that, your mileage may completely vary from mine, but I, I feel any insight that I can share is worth considering something you guys can take out on the water, take it with a grain of salt if you want, but uh, I think it's going to help some guys out there catch more and bigger king salmon. And along those lines, let's start out by talking about size. And I'm probably going to shoot two videos here this afternoon real quick. You know, if I'm on a kokanee bite, let's use that for an example, and I'm catching dinky fish after dinky fish after dinky fish, and I know there's bigger fish in the lake, I'm apt to pick up my stuff and leave. Same is true of trout. If I'm on a rainbow bite and I'm catching a lot of dinky trout and I'm at a place like you know Shasta where I know there's some much larger fish available, I might leave those small fish and go prospecting for more fish in a different area. With king salmon, I don't use that philosophy. If I'm consistently catching kings, I keep grinding on those fish. If I'm catching one pound kings, I'm very reluctant to leave that bite because too many times I've been catching small kings and all of a sudden I'll catch a five pounder. They seem to hang out together regardless of size in the same areas feeding on the same thing. So once I establish a pattern, if I'm running, you know, pink dodgers and white hoochies with anchovy on them with, you know, anchovy scent procure inside the tube and I'm catching fish, I stick with that pattern. As long as I'm getting hit, I stick with the pattern because I've just seen it too many times where, you know, Oroville a week ago, prime example, first fish I caught was 18 inches, followed by a couple dinks, followed by a couple nice fish, followed by a couple dinks, followed by, you know, a fish well over three pounds. So, and they were all in the same area. We were getting double hookups, you know, one big fish and one dinky fish. So I never leave an active king bite to go look for bigger fish. And I seldom, you know, once I start to dial in what they're hitting on, I'll experiment a little bit, but to what I really want to do is run the same combo at a variety of different depths, just to up my chances of hooking fish, of encountering fish in the area where I'm catching them. Those are just some more of my thoughts on king salmon fishing. Um, like I said, your mileage may vary, but uh, if you're not having a lot of success catching kings or you're just getting started with kings, I would, I would urge you to really take this advice and some of the other videos we've done recently to heart, at least as a starting point to get started. Then, you know, time on the water, experience, confidence, that means everything, but I'm trying to sketch out kind of a, a starting point, just trying to share my philosophy with you guys. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I got a bunch of stuff to do. I'm going to shoot one more video here real quick this afternoon and uh, get back at it. I got this big 
shelf unit thing I got to put together. So anyway, you guys have a great day. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel, go down there, hit the subscribe button. It'll only take you a second. It doesn't cost a penny. Um, we want you to be part of this community, man. It's really exciting. It's growing. Uh, we just went over 10,000 subscribers. We're having a great time here. And if you're looking for salmon gear, trout gear, striper gear, rods, reels, lures, more, um, go to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store and check it out. Everything in there, I stand behind the stuff I use myself and I try to offer up great gear, utilitarian gear at a very affordable price. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks for watching. Finally, the sun's going away. There's a cloud up there. I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube, guys.